In the sweltering heat of a Vietnamese afternoon, the roar of jet engines pierces the humid air as a squadron of U.S. bombers freaks across the cloudless sky. Accompanying them on their daring mission, a lone Grumman TF-9J, the trainer version of the veteran Cougar fighter, assumes the forward air control role, its pilot scanning the verdant landscape below. Down in the jungle floor, Viet Cong guerrillas are hiding amidst the dense foliage. Yet, camouflage-friendly forces are also patrolling the area. If the cougar incorrectly identifies the target, the consequences will be tragic. Suddenly, sensing movement down below, the eagle-eyed pilot spots an armed unit, silently making its way through the tropical undergrowth. Dipping low over the tree line to get a better look, his suspicions are confirmed. It's the Viet Cong. Eagerly awaiting intelligence, the ground commanders below hear the pilot's voice come crackling over the radio to reveal the enemy's position. They give the order to strike. Moments later, the cougar approaches, and the jungle shakes with the thunderous roar of a bomb attack. When the cougar was introduced to provide a tenacious rival for the infamous Mikoyan Gryevich MiG-15 Russian fighter in the early 1950s, it became the first ever American fighter to use a cutting-edge swept wing design, and thus represented the beginning of a new generation of military aircraft. With wings that were angled backwards from their roots, instead of jutting out perpendicular to the fuselage, the aircraft was able to fly at higher speeds by streamlining the airflow over the wings and reducing the drag effect that would slow it down. Furthermore, as well as making the aircraft more stable by distributing lift more evenly across the wings, its angled shape also helped it to respond more quickly to pilot inputs, providing it with better maneuverability, essential in combat situations. While swept wing aircraft had first been developed before World War I, they were not used in a military context until the Germans launched their swept wing Messerschmitt ME-262 fighter in 1944. At the time, the US Navy was more interested in building straight wing aircraft, but that would soon change as World War II ended. Then, the Korean War took to the skies in the form of raging dogfights. The Americans were disappointed to find that their Grumman F-9F Panthers straight-wing jet fighters were no match for their MiG-15 swept-wing counterparts provided to North Korea by the Soviet Union. It was clear that they would need to replace the Panther with a new fighter, with a wing shape that would allow it to go head-to-head -head with the MiG-15. The contract for developing a swept-wing fighter jet was awarded in early 1951 to Grumman, the manufacturer responsible for many of the Navy's most effective fighter planes during World War II. The company had established a tradition of naming these fighters after fierce felines, and decided that its latest model would be called the Cougar, as it was looking for an aircraft that would be both lean and fast to give it the edge over its enemies. Grumman had already begun studying possible modifications to the Panther, and by leaving many elements of the aircraft essentially unchanged, they could develop the Cougar in just a few months, much more quickly than they would have if they'd been starting with a blank canvas. The similarities between the two were so numerous that the new fighter received the official name of the F-9F-6, as the Navy considered it a direct continuation of the latest F-9F-5 Panther model. As well as the landing gear and the Pratt & Whitney J-42 P-6 engine, a licensed version of the Rolls-Royce Neen, the Panther's center fuselage section was left almost the same after the design team concluded that any other possible arrangement would have too great an impact on the new fighter's center of gravity thus requiring the propulsion and several other aspects of the plane to be redesigned as well. The Cougar's armament was also a carryover from the Panther, usually consisting of four 20mm cannons mounted in the nose of the aircraft, as well as provisions for 2,000-pound bombs or 150 US gallon drop tanks, giving it the means necessary to wreak havoc on enemy positions on the ground, as well as engage in air-to-air -air combat. All the same, there were certain other features which would require alteration. To help counterbalance the change in the aircraft's center of gravity brought about by the new type of wings, only a single hardpoint mounting was fitted under each one, and the Panther's two 120-gallon tip tanks were replaced by internal fuel tanks built into the wings themselves. The slats and flaps on the wings were also revamped in order for them to function better with the new shape, with the modified fuselage flaps doubling up as a second set of air brakes when necessary. As the Korean War intensified, time was of the essence. Not a second could be spared in the global struggle against communism, and by focusing on key innovations while keeping many elements from the Panther intact, Grumman's design for the Cougar was a fast and efficient upgrade from its predecessor. With the first prototype, known as the XF9F6, ready just six months after Grumman had been given the contract, test pilot Fred Rowley took the Cougar out on its maiden flight on September 20, 1951. During the testing process, the Cougar encountered few significant challenges, and any problems were swiftly addressed or accepted. 
As the war in Korea continued to rage, the Navy was eager to get the aircraft into action as soon as possible. The Cougar emerged as a significant leap forward, with many pilots lauding its superior handling compared to the Panther, particularly during approach maneuvers. Remarkably, it could break the sound barrier during full-power vertical dives without encountering any unsettling buffeting or adverse flight characteristics. While it maintained subsonic speeds in level flight, it boasted a notable improvement over the aircraft that had come before it, with the critical Mach number increasing from 0.79 to 0.86 at sea level, and up to 0.895 at 35,000 feet or 10,000 meters, delivering considerably enhanced performance. On the other hand, there were some concerns about the fighter's role in pitch control, leading to some further modifications, such as the addition of wing fences and a powered flying tail. Once the aircraft was deemed ready, initial production began on the first version of the Cougar, the first batch assigned to a fleet squadron in late 1952. The first Cougar squadron to actually deploy was VF-42, assigned to the recently recommissioned USS Yorktown in August 1953. Though the Korean War was over, the Cold War was only just beginning, and the Cougar was poised to come to democracy's defense at any given moment. American scientists worked hard to improve the Cougar throughout the 1950s. While the F9F7 turned out to be a misstep with the installation of a less powerful Allison J33 engine, it was soon changed back. The subsequent F9F8 was far more effective, successfully improving top speed, visibility, and control at high angles of attack. Later versions of the F9F8 became the first Navy aircraft to deploy with N9 Sidewinder air-to-air -air missiles, with four of them strapped under its wings, ready to take out enemy planes in an instant. The F9F8B model of the aircraft underwent a sultry transformation, being equipped with the Low Altitude Bombing System, or LABS, and additional sophisticated circuitry to handle the delivery of special stores, a euphemism for nuclear payloads. Despite their ominous capabilities, these sleek doomsday machines retained their primary function as fighter bombers, sporting six underwing hardpoints for carrying an array of ordnance. Other variations of the Cougar were also developed, such as the F9F8T trainer model, nicknamed by some as the Tuger because of its second cockpit for dual pilot training, and the F9F8P photo reconnaissance plane, which had an extended nose designed to hold cameras instead of the standard armament, perfect for highly classified Cold War spy missions. While awaiting its moment to head into battle, the Cougar became the perfect aircraft for the U.S. Navy to show off its aviation prowess. Their legendary flight demonstration team, the Blue Angels, used the Cougar on several occasions, taking advantage of its excellent maneuverability to wow the American public with spectacular death-defying stunts at air shows. The Navy also used the high-velocity Cougar to break the transcontinental crossing record on April 1, 1954, when three pilots from Fleet Fighter Squadron VF-21 made the 2,438-mile journey in less than four hours for the first time. The fastest of the three recorded an impressive time of 3 hours 45 minutes 30 seconds, demonstrating the huge progress in aircraft performance that the Cougar represented. On May 19, 1956, a demonstration was being given aboard the aircraft carrier USS Essex as part of a special Mother's Day cruise for dependents of the crew, filmed by TV crews for later broadcast. As a Cougar came in for a landing, its arresting gear malfunctioned. As the stunned crowds looked on, the terrified pilot struggled to regain control of the fighter as it frantically slid around the flight deck before dropping off the end of the ship into the ocean below. Several nail-biting seconds passed before the Cougar emerged from the spray. Fortunately, the pilot was promptly rescued by a helicopter crew. Though tragedy was avoided that day, these kinds of incidents raised questions about the Cougar's reliability. As the end of the decade neared, it started to fall out of favor within the U.S. Navy, finding itself gradually withdrawn from frontline service during 1958 and 59, and replaced by newer and more capable aircraft, such as the F-11F Tiger and the F-8U Crusader. In the United States, by the mid-1960s, the only unit still using Cougars were the U.S. Naval Reserves. Yet elsewhere, the Cougars' speed and versatility were still greatly appreciated. Argentinian naval aviation acquired two F-9F-8T trainers in 1962, hitting the headlines when it became the first jet to break the sound barrier in Argentina. One is still on display at the Naval Aviation Museum in Bahia Blanca. Back in the States, the Cougar was about to make a surprise comeback. While it had narrowly missed out on taking part in the Korean War, it was finally going to get its chance to see combat, as once again, the United States and their Soviet rivals found themselves engaged in a proxy war in an Asian country divided between a communist north and a capitalist south. This time, it was Vietnam. 
As American hopes for a quick and easy war faded, it became apparent that they would be there for the long run and needed as much air support as possible. Detachments of four two-seater F-9F-8T trainers, now known as TF-9Js, were sent to serve with U.S. Marines headquarters and maintenance squadrons, with Cougar units deploying to both Squadron 11 at Da Nang and Squadron 13 at July during 1966. Once seemingly destined to spend the rest of their days on simple training missions, these Cougars now found themselves as frontline heroes in the thick of the action. Forward Air Controllers, or FACs, had played a significant part in the Vietnam War since the beginning of the conflict, functioning as an intelligence source, munitions expert, communication specialist, and most importantly, the on-scene commander of the strike forces and the start of any possible subsequent combat search and rescue. Proving itself as an effective FAC, the Cougar had found yet another new forte, directing precise and devastating airstrikes against enemy positions in South Vietnam, a true testament to its versatility. After being retired from the conflict in Southeast Asia in 1968, the Cougar returned to its pre-Vietnam status as a trainer aircraft, playing a key role in preparing hundreds of U.S. Navy pilots. It wasn't until February 1974 when Training Squadron 4, the last unit still using the TF-9J, decided it was time for an upgrade. This meant that the last of the Cougars in use by the Navy would finally be withdrawn from service. With a varied and distinguished career spanning over two decades, the trailblazing Grumman F-9 Cougar will forever be remembered as one of the United States' premier fighters during the tense and uncertain times of the Cold War era, whether it was gearing up to take down Soviet MiG-15s, performing daring maneuvers as part of the Blue Angels, commanding airstrikes over the Vietnamese jungle, or providing vital training to heroes of future conflicts. <laughs>